good morning, family. You know, the other day I was talking with some students about food. We were discussing foods we liked, and somehow the conversation turned to weird food combinations. I'm proud to say that I advocated for ketchup on pizza, and they looked at me like I was crazy, but you really should try it. One of the students said, you know what's really weird? Some people put salt on watermelon. And she made a real yucky face. And I replied, hold on a minute. Salt on watermelon is really, really good. You should try it this summer. Salt really is good on watermelon and on other foods. And it's also good for other things too. And Jesus talked about salt in his Sermon on the Mount. So listen as we read Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Hear the word of the Lord. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how will it become salty again? It's good for nothing except to be thrown away and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill can't be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand, and it shines on all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people, so they can see the good things you do, and praise your Father who is in heaven. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. So we say, thanks be to God. Salt has a bit of a bad reputation these days. My doctor tells me that salt causes my high blood pressure. But we can't get away from salt, can we? It's in practically everything we eat, from cereal to ketchup. And salt makes french fries taste fantastic. And there's probably a salt shaker on every dining room table in America, right? This time of year, we even use salt to melt the ice on our driveways. Well, apparently not this winter, not around here. Throughout history, wars have been fought over salt. Entire economies have been built on salt. Salt, it's safe to say, is extremely valuable. In ancient times, salt was the only preservative available to keep food from spoiling. They didn't have refrigerators to make their food last. The solution? Salt it. Soldiers needed salt, too. If they were wounded in battle, they disinfected their wounds with salt. That's where our expression, rubbing salt in your wounds, comes from. Folks in Jesus' time referred to sharing fellowship around a dinner table as sharing the salt. That must have been something like chewing the fat today. Since Old Testament times, salt has been a symbol for the covenant between the Israelites and God. The ancient Jewish priests used salt to purify sacrifices in the temple. Salt was valuable and vitally important. So when Jesus told his followers, you are the salt of the earth, what he was really saying was, you are valuable, you have great worth. Nowadays, the expression salt of the earth is a cliche for a good but rather plain or unrefined person. And we don't realize the powerful impact of Jesus' expression, salt of the earth, unless we know its history. Jesus wasn't just saying that Christians need to be nice people. We do need to be nice. Please be nice. But there's much more. Jesus is commanding us to make people's lives better, to make the world better. As salt in the world, we're called to be an antiseptic. We're called to cleanse the world. Have you ever thought of yourself as a preservative to keep society from going bad? That's your job. That's your responsibility. If you love and follow Jesus. There has been a temptation throughout much of church history for followers of Jesus to retreat, to hide away, to isolate ourselves. And I will admit that hiding away is often very tempting, isn't it? But Jesus asks us to do the opposite. He calls us to live with people, to influence them, to touch them in meaningful ways, to be salt and even to be light. We are salt for the earth. At least we're supposed to be. Now, sometimes we think that we can become salt. Not now, but sometime in the future, after we've worked hard to be more perfect. 
But that's not what Jesus said. He said, you are the salt. It's in the present tense. It's not a question of what we should become. It's who we are to be now. When Jesus spoke these words to his disciples, he was speaking to us too. It's not a matter of who I am, he said. It's a matter of who we are. Salt is different from the world in which it is put, and Christians are different from the world in which we live. Jesus talks about salt becoming useless when it has lost its taste. Now, scientifically, that can't happen, I'm told. I'm no chemist, but I do know that sodium chloride is a very stable compound. Salt cannot lose its capacity to season food unless it's mixed with something else that looks like salt and used the way salt is used. So what does Jesus mean? In ancient times, devious vendors would often mix white sand with salt and then sell it to poor people. What could be useless or more useless than flat-tasting salt? Jesus expected great things, and he did not want his followers to go flat. So he wasn't just speaking here to one disciple or to another. Jesus was talking to anyone and everyone who wants to follow him. But when a Jesus follower stops being different from the rest of the world, they lose their saltiness. And that can happen to a single disciple, or it can happen to an entire congregation. And it happens every day. But I pray that it never happens to you. If you love and follow Jesus, then you are the salt of the earth. Jesus calls you, yes, you, to be a preservative, a positive influence in the lives of people around you and in the whole world in which we live. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Good and gentle Father, we thank you for the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, who made things better everywhere he went. Help us to be salt and light in the world. Help us to bring flavor and illumination to those around us. Help us to be a positive influence on those in our community and beyond. Help us to be peacemakers, spreading love and harmony wherever we go. Give us the courage and the wisdom to stand up for what is right and to always strive to be more like your son, Jesus. We pray today for those who are vulnerable to illness and disease. We pray for everyone in pain. We pray for those who are tired. We pray for people who are lonely, for folks who are uncertain, and for those who need direction. We continue to pray for peace today. Lands and lives are scarred by war. Communities are terrorized by violence. Neighborhoods are torn apart by drugs. And relationships are destroyed by politics. We need your healing and your peace. We pray today for those who are afraid. We pray for peace for anyone and everyone feeling stress, pressure, and anxiety today. We ask for justice. Fill us with your spirit to work for peace, to bring justice, and to offer grace and mercy. You made us out of love, and you created us to love. So help us to love others, even when they don't look or act like us. Help us to love people, no matter what. And now using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As always, thank you for joining me today. I really do hope these words were helpful to you. If they were, will you like, review, and share this message? If you leave a good review, it will help other people to find and benefit from these thoughts and these prayers. By the way, if you have a prayer request, or if you have a special need, please leave a message in the comment section, and then be assured that I will be praying for you and for that need. Now, this week your job is to love at least three people, and make sure at least one of them doesn't deserve it. Why? Because everyone needs love, and everyone needs to know that God loves them, no matter what, right? Remember, with Jesus, we always, always 
always have hope. Now, receive these words of benediction today. May the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen? Amen.